Um, open data for me, if we think of government and public services as a brain, at the moment the parts of the brain that are making the decision making are as quite a small uh, proportion of the brain. And what open data does is it opens out the information to truly democratise decision making and make clear the decisions that are being made so that they can be scrutinised. And the potential, therefore, is, is that we go from using a small part of our brain for decision making to having a much more collective view and making the best of ideas and innovation from across the piece. Uh, to me, I think open data means data that you can find, that's discoverable, and also that you can actually access it. It's not just that you know it exists, but you can get to it. And of course, ultimately, that you can reuse it. I don't think it's possible to determine the most important use by theme because, of course, there are many different ways that people can use open data for the environment, for government spending, for whatever. But in my view, the most important use for open data is to give citizens tools that they did not have before. So it's giving them access to information and it's also giving them tools with which they can use that information. I think when you consider uh, the kind of situation that mankind is in at the moment, um, open data can certainly make a difference because I think open data can help us know what's going on, what's not going on, and quite possibly also help us do something about it. Two quite good examples I think that you can extrapolate from are one which is in the UK, where the UK Flood Agency has released all of its data so that people can build early warning uh, apps and also they can make decisions about where to build and not to build. Another example is where Harvard University have uh, analysed 2.3 million potential organic compounds that could be used in the future for uh, conversion into solar energy. So these examples are quite early decision making. You extrapolate from that though and an awful lot of environmental decision making in terms of effectiveness and what we need to do, cost and so on, amount of energy produced could be much better employed using open data and collective intelligence. I know the city of Copenhagen in Denmark, they use the uh, open data, uh, open street map data, as a kind of overlay on their own digital maps. And that allows them to spot differences. And these differences alert them to the fact that maybe they should go and check that their own digital maps may not be up to scratch because the open data community, which is uh, OpenStreetMap, they have perhaps discovered that this road is actually closed because of roadworks. And so the, the government is actually using open data from the community to, to become better at doing what governments do. In 10 years time, I would hope that open data is going to be much more freely available so that we can make much more sort of detailed and uh, collective decision making around the way to go in the future. And I think this will be combined with artificial intelligence as well. So where we're able to uh, early predict before people get ill, three out of five cancers are preventable. Things like uh, depression are preventable. So better prediction modeling on where things are gonna happen and when on an individual basis and a geographical basis. Making better treatment decisions, both from a cost point of view, but also an effectiveness point of view. For open data to reach its full potential, I think both authorities and society have to be very active. I think that's an important part of the open data puzzle that sometimes we don't discuss. We talk a lot about authorities making data public and making data open, and I think, of course, that's important. You want governments to actually make their data accessible to the public. But there's another part of that equation, which is society. So, for example, even if a government puts all this data online, if people are not using Using that data in a productive way, it's not going to actually address any challenges. So I think there's two parts. There's the authority part and then there's the society part. If we were to look at those who really do a good job, I think that I would really like to emphasize those who are just about to do a good job. They may not be doing it today, but they're very willing to do that. They're very open-minded, they're very curious, they're trying to learn from what others do, and they're ready to make a change. Those are the real heroes, but they are, of course, the heroes of tomorrow, not of today. <laughs>